Hey guys, Ryan Rose here, and this video is on my top three favorite tools to build a horse's confidence with. And today for filming, I'm gonna be using uh, one of my horses, his name is Johnny Cash. He's a Mustang that I adopted. Um, he came from the Carson City Prison out in Nevada, and uh, he's black, so I named him Johnny Cash. Some of you may have followed him from the Mustang taming course that I did last summer. And uh, anyways, um, he's not, he had about 20 hours of handling in that course. And uh, that, so for him, that was about it. And then I adopted him and I pulled him out. Um, so he hasn't, he hasn't been doing a whole lot since. He's been kind of sitting on the pasture. Today we got a really rainy day in Wisconsin and he was standing at the hay feeder um, in the rain. So he's a little wet and a little woolly. Uh, it wasn't even tame enough really for me to feel comfortable trying to groom him or, or touch his hind legs or things like that. And so I'm gonna be building his confidence with some of my tools and I thought this would be a great video to show you what I do for that. So the first tool that I have is a stick and a flag. Um, this tool is a great tool because the flag is a little intimidating to them. More intimidating than if I didn't have the flag and I just had a, a stick. This tool exaggerates um, other tools that we might use so that when we go to other things we can be a little more precise. So this is a good kind of gross motor skills confidence building. Now I'm going to use this uh, stick in two ways. The first way is just I'm going to see if he can get confident with it touching him everywhere. So I might just walk away from him here. Good. Let him smell it. So again, he had he had this done with him in the past. Um, so he's he's handled that pretty well. Um, for the most part, it's like, can you use it to see if you can touch their whole body over? Then the second part is to see, can you bring it from out here away from him up towards them and have them be okay with that? There we go. Very good. So he's handling that pretty well. I try to keep him on a loose line when they do that. If they were to get scared and run around, um, so like right now, if I move the flag and he gets scared of it, I'm not going to stop moving the flag because he's scared. I'm going to keep the flag moving, and when he stands still or does something that shows me he's acting like a partner, that's when I'll take it away. So he moved away, I kept it going, he finally stood still, then I retreated with it. Okay? And I might approach again. Again, just get him used to something going from out here to here. And then the whole time I'm doing this, I can be out of the kick zone. If he does get scared and moves around, I can always uh, redirect his nose and move his hindquarters away from me to get him to face up and become more, more confident with it. So this is one of my favorite tools for that. The second thing that I love to do with this is I like to teach a horse to read my energy. Um, a lot of people that get a horse for the first time, they're told, if you're calm, the horse will be calm. And we would love for that to be true, but that's not true. You have to teach horses to be calm when you're calm. So I'm gonna show you how I set up that lesson. My life up, I'm gonna ask him to move. So the flag represents life. Things that happen that scare horses, that kind of get, get their life going a little bit. And when he chooses to read my intention over the flag, so my intention is saying walk a circle right now. The flag is being really noisy. The flag, if, I, if the flag, um, you know, meant something to him, he might be thinking candor right now. But I want him to read my energy, not the flag's noise. Figuratively and literally. So if you have a horse that's really overreactive to pressure, this is a great way to build their confidence with it. There, he started to slow down, so I'll take my life down. Very good. So being able to use the flag to, as you can see, he's not more afraid of it now, even after all that flagging. Very good. So again, if I'm moving the flag here and we're at a standstill, just because the flag is being noisy, if my energy is calm, he should be calm. Just like if you're riding your horse and it's windy and say somebody else's horse acts up or a dog comes running out barking or a little kid comes running out, you know, waving a banner or a flag around or something like that, your horse should stay in tune with you and your energy, not whatever outside thing is going on. So here's my next favorite tool to get a horse used to. Um, it's a lariat rope. Um, and I love this rope because it's long enough that I can put this rope on all over their body and let them feel it and let it touch them while they're moving around. And to me, it kind of simulates um, its preparation for a saddle and a cinch, you know, tightening on them. 
is preparation for things being on their legs, their feet. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. It's preparation for branches, you know, on a trail ride out of the blue, just coming out and touching their leg. It just kind of prepares them for a lot of things. So if you can get a horse used to this lariat rope being all over on them, and they can get used to a feel coming from that, pretty much everything else um, that you would need to put on your horse, whether it be like, um, uh, you know, like leg, leg wraps, leg boots of some sort, barriers working on your horse, vets working on your horse, a lot of that stuff becomes pretty easy. So there, there are several things you can do with this. And if, if you've never handled one of these before, I would encourage you to practice just getting comfortable, you know, with the coils, um, get comfortable being able to toss out the coils and, and see how the rope lays together and works back in. So pick, pick one variable at a time, okay? So if you're getting used to this rope, um, take it out, get comfortable with it, handle it, throw it around, move it around, get familiar, and then apply it to your horse. So here's what I'm gonna do with the horse. So I'm gonna fold the rope and lay that over my arm so that if he takes off on me, I'm not gonna get too tangled up. Create a little bit of distance here. Now for me, I'm gonna build a loop and start to swing it there. That feels pretty easy, so we'll make a little bigger loop. Okay, ah, see he put his head down, I took it away. So if you can time it where when they relax, you take the pressure off, that's where you can kinda have put the, the icing on the cake. Now, if you're not really comfortable with swinging a big loop, what you can do is just let that loop out like this, and then maybe just practice swinging this around. Just swing the end of it. So you can see he's, he's getting used to something moving around. He tried to drop his head, so I took it away again. Very nice. Um, you can take this this rope and you can throw it over his back. So I can kind of just let it wrap around him and all of a sudden it's touching him on the far side. But you gotta be ready that if they decide to go run and jumping around, you know, depending on how spooky your horse is, um, you gotta be ready for that. And so I'm, I would just disengage and have them face me. Um, he's had this done with him a lot in the round pen when we were initially taming him. So he's, I've not really worked with him since then, but he's, he's already kind of familiar with it from that, that perspective. Um, another thing I like to do is build a loop with it. with it. No big deal. I can practice pulling it a little bit tighter. Now, if he were to really run and block, um, that'd be calmed down there. So I'll kind of let it, oh, he did get calm there. And I would also, if you're not familiar with handling these tools, I would definitely wear gloves while you do this and be in a round bend. Okay, that'll make it much easier. He was calm, so I popped it off of him. Um, if I really thought a horse was going to get uncomfortable with it, I would probably have a saddle on them, and, and that way this horn of the saddle or the back of the saddle would catch the rope from falling off. What I wouldn't want the horse to learn is get scared of it, take off fast, and then get relief when the rope falls off of them. So you got to be careful that you're not teaching them that as well. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great thing to do. So I'm going to set that up one more time. And again, when I'm doing this, I'm being really obvious. What you don't want to do when you're handling these kind of tools is, is get to where you're sneaking around. Easy, boy. Easy. Easy. You know, and kind of where you're, you're doing that approach. You want to expose them and just kind of, kind of move around and stuff. Because when life happens, when something happens and it scares your horse, it usually doesn't happen slowly. It usually happens very quick. And so horses got to get used to things coming along and just going and all of a sudden touching them. And they just need to kind of get familiar with that. Very good. Much better response. Yeah, we'll pop that off when he's walking calmly. Very good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to throw. I'm going to let the loop all the way out like that. And I'm just gonna let this drag, okay? So I'm just gonna throw that over him, and I'm just gonna let it drag there. And again, you can have a saddle on when you do this or not, and just let it drag on the ground, okay? I want a little longer out there, so I'll put a little more. So again, he's just getting used to making that motion. So again, I, I didn't plan on, 
him getting used to me just doing this, but if that's what he's going to get scared of, then I'll take advantage of that and just work on that. Okay, so we'll let that rope out a little longer. Again, you can see if he got real scared, it would just pop off of him, um, which I don't necessarily want. Um, for him, I'm, I feel comfortable that I can teach him like this, but if you needed to have a saddle on or be in a smaller space, by all means, go ahead and do that. So, I love using it like that. And then the last way that I would present this to him is by attaching it to a leg. Now, I gotta give you a little caution with this because um, this can really scare a lot of horses. And it's up to you kind of how much exposure you wanna give to your horse. Well, so I wanna expose him to as many things as I can. And a lot of the horses that I have in training for, for clients, they want me to prepare their horses for kind of anything life could throw at them. So I'm always thinking of ways that I can test horses that would be above and beyond what you would normally encounter just on a regular trail ride or a regular arena ride. he's having a good response but I'm just telling you a lot of horses are going to be bothered by that so again be in a small enough space wear leather gloves um, if you if you're not comfortable with handling these ropes um, and uh, yeah make sure you keep your horse keep yourself safe while you're doing this so I thought I had prepared a horse really well and then I would use this to test how well did I teach that horse to follow my intention and so so now when I do this I'm not just gonna bring it up to him slowly and, and just you know up and down what I actually want to do is just kind of shake it strongly and see if he gets bothered by it or not. If I was, say this was a blanket, like it's wet out and uh, we're going to put a, a sheet on him for, for turning him out this afternoon. And that blanket, I would take my time and prepare him and slowly put it on. But again, when I get to this, I kind of just want to get right after him and see. See, he handled it like a champ, so he did very good. So the work that we did with the layer rope, the work that we did with the flag, that prepared him for this. Good boy. Very nice. And now you can see I'm just kind of swinging it and letting it touch him. And again, I, I don't mind that he's getting bothered by this. My goal is not to go as slow as I can to make sure he never moves. My goal is to expose him to it and teach him that just because he gets a little scared and moves around doesn't mean I'm going to stop moving this bag. When he chooses to stop moving and, and act like a partner instead of a prey animal, you guys wait for it. So I try to keep the same motion going in my left hand. And I'm just keeping his nose tipped towards me so that I don't get kicked. And now I, I was too much to touch him with it, so now I'm just back to waving it. And there I felt like he made an effort. So there I took it away, and now I'll retreat and walk away from him. There you Tipping his nose towards me. I'm going to keep swinging this. There we go. And he tries to get confident with it. Take it away.
you can kind of touch them all over with it and just see if they can start to read your energy instead of the bag. See it? Ah, there we go. Now he's relaxing into that pretty nice. So there are some of my top three favorite things to build a horse's confidence with. They're all inexpensive tools that anybody can have and keep around to help your horse get more comfortable. So go out and give it a try. If you like the video, please give it a, a like and then hit subscribe so that you get these videos on a regular basis. I want to invite you to a Mustang taming course that I'm doing. Um, it starts the third week of August uh, 2019 and uh, we have a couple of spots open in the course still. So if you guys are interested in coming to learn um, what it takes to get a horse tame in a matter of weeks and prepare them uh, to be a good partner for somebody down the road, um, make sure you check out that, that uh, link. There's a link in the description um, below.